This is a MapleSoft digital education podcast. Hello, I'm here today with Dr. Matthew DeMars uh, from the University of Guelph. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Um, oh, so Matthew, first off, congratulations on, on I think you won the uh, uh, teaching award at Guelph oh, uh, last year, correct? Yeah, that's, uh, in, that's Innovative right. teaching. That's, that's um, right. Uh, uh, right. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about that, uh, like you know, first, um, University of Guelph in general and, and how you got won this award? Yeah, um, I, I guess I managed to get a nomination from some other professors and, and the students wrote some things. I guess I've done a reasonable job in the past and um, I haven't been teaching at Guelph forever, but uh, yeah, it was a nice little surprise last year mm -hmm. uh, to get this Innovation in Teaching Award. Um, it's a faculty association thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, was uh, it to do with particular for online education or, or, was, or using digital assets or? I mean, that's been part of some of the courses that I teach, but this is more of uh, an award that was dedicated towards the general. Mm -hmm. I teach very large classes, and I teach a lot of different students. Yeah. Um, in uh, in mathematics, and so this was a, a more general recognition, I guess. I, I know we've had sort of a long term relationship with the University of Guelph. Uh, my daughter's a graduate as well, oh, um, yeah. uh, and I believe you know you've always used um, online assessment as a low stakes drill and practice embed a concept. But it, like, are you shifting now to using it more in the teaching process? It's like, um, it's had little bits and pieces here and there. Um, you know, like I have used so um, you know tools like Maple TA. Mm -hmm. As you said, have been low stakes, um, enforced homework, yeah. which uh, is, I think, good. I mean, there's lots of uh, data to show, you know, statistics to show that if you can have someone practice, uh, they will learn better. They, uh, they, the results on the final will be better. Uh, and it, and it's, I'm always amazed how students will do that over and over, like do those types of exams over and over again for point zero zero one percent of their mark. Uh, yeah. Well, it depends. I, I've been trying lately, actually, to improve that experience because that might be true for many students, but I think that you need a certain amount of buy-in from. A, there are a lot. There is a certain subset of students that will, you know, work at an assignment and so on, and if they get their their eighty or whatever, they're yeah. satisfied with that, and they don't want to. Which is probably know, good time yeah. management, right? Like <laughs> there, there's part of that, but some of it is um, making tests that are enjoyable to do, or at least not a pain in the butt, um, because... Um, Boy, I've never you know, heard that. In all oh, my discussions with people, I've never heard anyone use the word enjoyable and test in the same sentence. Well, so. yeah, it, it's, it's about making, um, uh, you know, like who wants to do a test? But who really wants to do a test if it's going to be um, a long slog of a process? Mm -hmm. And a, a, a big thing that I've been trying to do in the last several years, and uh, uh, so I guess in context, right, I, I teach first year calculus yeah. and I have done so for several years now. And when I came into um, my current role, Maple TA was being used for the, uh, for the course and we had um, several algorithmically generated quizzes. And uh, my main, I think that many students saw value in these, but there were certain um, amounts of resistance as well in the fact that when they're lengthy, when they're complicated, mm -hmm. when the you know input has to be just so or just yeah, precise yeah. and so on, you know, you lose some some of them, right? Mm -hmm. When it becomes less easy than it possibly could be, or in their viewpoint, what it could be. And so I've been trying to take that element out of it to just make them, you know, straightforward. So there is no of the none of this like oh I just spent an hour and then I lost mm -hmm. a bracket so there yeah. goes my work you know yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. like that kind of s stupid stuff is not I don't want that to be the reason why people don't like yeah that's right yeah. calculus quizzes right and so um, yeah trying to make more straightforward more likable quizzes um, uh, has been an emphasis lately um, although it's remained low stakes okay yeah, but are you doing more high stakes or more as Not part of the teaching process? In my courses, no, um, but I want to emphasize that calculus at University of Guelph is not the only mm -hmm. course at the University yeah. of Guelph, right? We, uh, we have it being involved in uh, a few different math and stats courses beyond the calculus, and I know that business has uh, taken on um, 
as well. So there is a variety of courses that are using it for a, a different, okay. a different means. Now I believe your enrollments are increasing uh, generally. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, what? Um, I, 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 I hope that's good news. Um, yeah, yeah, it's mixed news. Mm -hmm. It's mixed news. I think that any what's <laughs> the large classroom setting is absolutely challenging. Mm -hmm. It's challenging in that as a uh, professor that cares deeply about teaching, you want to create a personal experience. Yeah. You want to be able to learn names and get to know people and have, you know, uh, tests that cater towards a specific mm -hmm. class or uh, uh, the personality of the class. You know, I, I, like, I like to have the ability to take that one question from a lecture that I'm like, wow, that was a good question. I've never thought of that before. And think to myself while I go on a run or something, you know, I want to make a test question out of this. And, and like, I feel like the bigger a class gets or the more, the more legwork there is to do, and that tends to increase, uh, I don't want to say linearly with class size, but it increases, it becomes less practical to make that course uh, I, I, so I, tailored, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like that's why many people are embracing some flavor of blended classrooms where you know, a lot of the content yeah, is, or a lot of the exposition is done in an offline, or I mean an online environment, sure. not in the classroom. And that would free your time up as a professor for more either one-on-one -on -one or small group interaction where you can actually get to know someone and discuss and right. look into their eye and yeah. see if they look yeah. to see panic or not. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um. So, uh, so I, uh, should I interpret that you're in favor of smaller class, like large versus class? Oh, cl yeah, I, I, I think that, um, so I have the... Uh, or maybe how do you approach the blended classroom issue? I mean, would you see, uh, and not maybe the question of how you're teaching today, but if you projected if had the, the future and had the perfect yeah. environment, what would it be? I guess it depends. Uh, I think I have a good thing going. You know, I, I really enjoy um, using online tools as a supplement for an in-person course. Yeah, yeah. But I completely recognize that uh, um, as class sizes increase and as uh, like it, it becomes increasingly infeasible to do some of the things I want to do. Um, now, as for creating a, a, a course that's uh, that's blended or online. There are many question marks associated with that for me, uh, associated with, you know, um, the resourcing, like getting getting the ability to put something like this together, mm -hmm. having the support at the institutional level. Yeah, yeah that's uh, you know, very important. That's, that's the, the, the main hesitation with so many people mm -hmm. that I talk to, and, and it is one myself, you know. Uh, it's very easy when you have something that works well enough to, that inertia is, yeah. is good, and trying to, you know, incrementally change some of that and... You know, as I said, one of my recent projects has been remaking some of the Maple Tea quizzes that I've been doing. Yeah. Um, because maybe some of the problems that I was running into with complicated questions and students having issues, maybe that difficulty is better corrected by making that um, component better yeah. than transforming an entire course. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I think at, at Guelph too, we have the challenge that, I mean, if I, want to ch if I want to change my first year calculus courses, not only do I need buy-in from the math department, not only do I need buy-in from the School of Engineering, which will certainly have right. accreditation uh, worries and um, different standards that they're worried about. You know, I have to have buy-in from them. I need, you know, the resources from above as well at, at the administrative yeah. level. There's so many, uh, so many hoops to jump through where I could, on the other hand, uh, recruit a student in the summer and work really well with them to to adjust something that's already yeah. existing to make it better. Um, it helps to have a little bit of um, you know measurement and analytics with the uh, components because unfortunately now what you just described everyone has an opinion. Yep. <laughs> uh, their opinions may be relevant, may be dated, but they, you know academic environment, everybody has an opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it'd be nice. I'm, I'm hoping in the near future that you could bring real data to bear, you know, like, you know, a uh, question causing problems. Yeah. And hopefully you could just see that, 
prove it almost, you know, that it wouldn't be an argument. One thing that I'm really excited about, um, and we've been talking a lot about data, and, uh, um, you know, I, I've been trying to push to make these quizzes uh, a better resource, more viewed more use as a better use uh, of students' time, that they're more mm -hmm. helpful and so on. Um, I want, the original goal of the quizzes was for them to serve as, as uh, reinforcing um, uh, homework. Mm -hmm. And if students found them to be annoying or irritating, or some students found them to be annoying or irritating at first because of different uh, issues that didn't need to be there, possibly, um, you know, it would be interesting to measure things like how often, how, how much time students are spending with material then versus now. Yeah. How many attempts are students making at these quizzes yeah, exactly. then versus now? Not just about talking about grades, but that's relevant mm -hmm. too. How does, um, you know, students that are willing to take the time out to um, attempt a quiz, you know, four times instead of two, or five how, times instead of, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, how do they correlate how, with uh, exactly. the results? Exactly. Um, but moreover, uh, so the pilot, the release of the new quizzes this fall has, has happened, and it's going pretty well um, so far. And um, what I'm actually finding, which is uh, really interesting to me, is that with these new quizzes, um, at the end of every due date, so uh, students have in, an infinite number of attempts and, and can, can uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's a small number of questions that are algor al yeah. algorithmically designed. Yeah, randomized. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But what I'm finding, which is f not something that I really intended, was that after they close, I open up a practice version and students are doing the practice versions more than they were. Interesting. Which is, it, which tells me that they do see value. Yeah, um, yeah, like if they have no like mark motivation, that it's an absolute test. Right, it is, it, yeah. because now it's not for grades. Now it's for, wow, I need to practice this stuff yeah. because, you know. Like, uh, like mock examinations and that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think that, I mean, <laughs> I guess you could make an argument that they're really doing it to try and get the grades from the higher stakes written Mm -hmm. tests and so on, but uh, if they do see it as an important first step of their fundamental understanding of concepts, then it's kind of doing exactly what I want it to do, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it means that the, any irritation aspect that was there before is not as present if they're using them voluntarily when they don't have to, yeah. right? And that's really encouraging to me. Now, do you do any um, like in classroom questions, uh, uh, anything like that? I, I use Maple in class okay. uh, from time to time. I think it's, in my opinion, I don't like f forcing it. I like to use it where it's natural. I think there's a very mm -hmm. um, uh, some really great places to where use it. it right? yeah. If you have a if you have a uh, a graph that you don't think is uh, terribly intuitive and you can show people maple software type in a function hit enter hit you know differentiate plot it in 30 seconds you have the class is like wow that's that's really yeah, cool sometimes seeing a plot of something gives yeah. meaning to it but even more so you're right i teach differential calculus integral calculus um a, a really uh, fun place that i like to use this every or use maple in particular every year is when we're first talking about doing, um, I don't know how rusty you are on your... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Engineer by you, background, a little okay. bit rusty though. <laughs> if you have like, if you have a, a, a chain rule in reverse question, mm -hmm. so if I have, um, you know, um, uh, I need a, a, what appears inside an integral to be just so, yep. so that like this piece of the, the integrand is the derivative of what's there. Exactly. And if it's exactly. even a little bit off, the, the integral ends up being much more complicated yeah. or even impossible mm -hmm. as far as this, the students are concerned um, to evaluate. And they don't appreciate that until you just they, bring open Maple. Until they try it, yeah. You change the four to a three, and suddenly the nice one line answer with two terms Expense turns into a four, half a page. Four pages, I know. And <laughs> like, the, the reaction from the students is audible, because it's yeah. like, whoa, like it's, yeah. they're blown away, right? And it's the simplest thing that I cannot do, yeah. right? But that Maple can do in a flash. And I think in, in little places here and there, it could be extremely effective yeah. at uh, getting a point across. Yeah, and I think you know that's part of the interactivity with the, you know online content. You know, yes, you can you know describe the content many different ways with words and images and graphs, and uh, but having that ability of 
students interacting, like moving a slider and seeing what happens, or yeah, like changing a number and, and just, yeah. uh, boy, and if you can get that awe factor, like yeah. you just described, yeah, you, that's, one, that's a wonderful piece of content exactly. right there. It, it completely is, and it's, it's, it happens naturally there, you know. Um, I find that, you know, you can have uh, the situation where, you know, you try to force a, a piece of code or a piece of, of um, into the wrong place and students don't buy in as nicely. Mm -hmm. But when it's um, an impactful moment, yeah. yeah, I think it makes a big difference. I, I know I was really thinking of something slightly different in that, you know, in my more limited teaching experience, I, I would teach. What have you taught? Uh, I don't want to go into okay. it. Oh, okay. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. Um, I said much more limited than, than you. Um, uh, but I would, uh, first off, I'm a, hor I'm, a, I'm a horrible teacher. I'm a horrible <laughs> educator because I, I have a very hard time. And my wife's also a teacher. And she tells me every day I'm a horrible educator. <laughs> it's very supportive. Um, uh, <laughs> if, if someone doesn't, if I present something in my way of thinking and someone doesn't comprehend it that way, I have a very hard time uh, changing it. Yeah, and looking at it from a different point of view. Right, sure. But uh, I do remember, you know, teaching a concept which I thought was perfectly clear for like a long time, and then I, I did a, a, a snap quiz on it, and fully expecting <laughs> that the um, uh, you know the the stats would come back that eighty percent got it and a few tales of people not listening, and it was it's, random yeah. noise right yeah, across. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and for me it was a revelation uh, and, and I, I like so you talked about a revelation to the students like you know revelation back to oh, to, to yeah. me trying to communicate no, information uh, so I do see value in that like you know trying to implement in line with the teaching experience where, mm -hmm. where this sampling of the class doing an online question um, you know it, it, because I think it gives uh, I mean, it probably isn't the same maybe on one-on-one -on -one when you look into someone's eyes and see, and see understanding, but... Well, it's neat, right? Because I think that one can influence the other a lot. I, I have the... I have greater freedom now. So in, in past years, I have been... And freedom will on, continue. Like, hey, that, that will ramp well, up over well, time. Here's so. the thing, right? Is that I was, like, on contract for year after year after year because mm -hmm. that's, you know, the way things yeah, are, right, yeah. you know? And, and I managed a tenure track position this spring. Congratulations. So but that gives me a little bit more job security. Yeah. And it gives me a little bit of... Uh, um, I don't want to say I wasn't invested in the course before, but now I feel as though any efforts that I make are going to be well, here the, for a while. Well, you know? no, and not only that, you're a freedom to experiment. Right. Uh, um, yeah, no, I think that's very and, important. And so, like, now, based on conversations I have with students in office hours or interesting questions that I get in class or experiences that I have with questions, like mm -hmm. uh, the first generation of my own Maple TA yeah. questions that I've made, um, you know, I have the freedom to uh, fold in a new one here and there and everywhere yeah. as we go forward and continue to tailor things as I see fit, um, whereas I haven't, I haven't been able to put that together before. Yeah. So. And, I, and I would say that in the very near future, like not only can you have the direct student feedback, and, but I think you will have stats and some oh, yes. analytics from questions, that's, and potentially... That's and where I, I was going to go, sorry, if, yeah. I, if I may, but that's yeah. where, I, when I started talking about that, that's where I actually meant to take that thought, yeah. and then I didn't go there. But the fact that based on the first generation of new quizzes that I have, I will have data yeah. that tells me which ones are effective or which ones are problem spots for students and uh, exactly. where to, you know. And I think the next stage of that is, like it may not even be your students, you know, like like content that you could look at, at the reaction for a much broader student population outside of the U of G. Um, I, I think, you know, that has interesting potential to right. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like anything, you know. It, like perhaps you have different kinds of questions that you answer, and and you don't know you don't know what's going to be easy and what's difficult, and you don't know based on the experiences of you know other uh, institutions and what kinds of questions they're mm -hmm. asking their students. And we can share that knowledge with each other. We can figure out where the knots are that we can like concentrate yeah. on massaging at those yeah. knots. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. Like it's you have to find the knots and. Uh, it's hard to really know what the common ones are. 